boys and girls! Welcome to GCF Iloilo Kids Church Online. I'm Max, and I have a question to ask. Are you thankful you have a family? God made families. How do I know that? The Bible tells me so. Yes, it's God's book, you see. It tells us about all God has done and His love for you and me. We're gonna learn more of these today. So kids, let's start today's worship with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Father in heaven, you alone is our God. We praise you for all you have done to us. Please keep us safe and please protect us every day. In Jesus' name, amen. In Psalm 101, God's word says, Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into His presence with singing. Kids, I invite you to get up on your feet and let's worship God with our voices.
Hello, boys and girls. I'm Miss Mira. I hope you have your Bibles there with you now, and let's open it from the book of Genesis. It's the first book of the Bible. Last week's lesson, we talked about God as the sovereign, wise, and loving creator. God placed Adam in the garden and gave him instructions about the forbidden tree. God's word, the Bible, teaches us that the penalty of sin is death. Here in Genesis chapter 2 verse 18, God's word says, Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. God knew that Adam needed a companion. Remember, God was his creator and knew what was best for him. God knew that Adam would not continue to be happy if he remained alone because God loved Adam and wanted the best for him, he decided to make a companion for him. God did not create Adam's companion at the same moment or in the same way he created Adam. God created her at just the right time and in just the right way to meet Adam's need for companionship. Here in Genesis chapter 2 verse 19, God's word says, Now out of the ground the Lord God had formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. God has placed Adam, the master over all the animals. So God also gave Adam the responsibility of giving them all their names. God brought Adam every creature he had made and Adam named them all. Man was made in God's image so he could know, love, and obey God. The animals could not know, love, and obey God like man could. Adam needed someone whom he could talk to and could do the same things that he could do. No animal would be a suitable companion for man. He needed someone more like himself. But man couldn't do anything to provide himself with a companion. Only God could make a companion for Adam. Here in Genesis chapter 2 verses 21 to 22, God's word says, So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and while he slept, took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. The passage tells us that God created Eve from Adam's rib. Only God could do this. Even though all the animals must have seemed very interesting. Imagine how happy Adam must have been to see this lovely woman whom God had made for him. She, like Adam, was created by God. But God had not made her from the dust of the ground, so as he had made Adam. 
God had actually made her from part of Adam's own body, his rib. How precious and close she must have been to Adam. And God had given her a mind and emotions and a will so she could also be able to communicate with God and with Adam. God made woman for man so they could be married and live together and have children. Marriage was God's perfect plan for Adam and Eve. This is God's plan for us that we belong in what we call family. Marriage is good because God gave marriage to man. Children and families are very special to God. It was God's idea for a husband and a wife to have children. Adam and Eve were unaware that they were naked. They were not embarrassed because they had no evil thoughts. Everything they knew was good and they have nothing to be ashamed of. Life was perfect for Adam and Eve. God had given them everything they needed. Everything around them was beautiful. As I close, kids, I want you to learn that God's Word hasn't changed. Thousands of years have passed since Adam and Eve became husband and wife. But God has never changed what He first wrote about marriage. Wow! What a perfect life with a perfect love in a perfect place. Everything God created was beautiful. Let's see now what John and Carol learned from today's story time. Ooh, my stomach feels terrible. I think I'm having a stomachache too. I've had one myself a couple of days ago. Did you know that in the beginning, there was no sickness? That would be great, because when I'm sick, I can't eat my favorite food. Did you know, in the beginning, everything was perfect. And it was perfect because God is perfect. And He created everything perfect and good. Oh yes, Carol, he was. God created Adam perfect. Adam didn't even have to work hard to keep the garden clean. There weren't any weeds growing in it. Adam must have been happy in such a wonderful place. Imagine all the trees, flowers, wow. vegetables, fruits, and berries. All the colors, fragrances, sounds, and good things to eat. Yes, eat. Yes, Carol, I think he was. God knew exactly what Adam needed. God knew that Adam needed a companion to talk to and be with. God made Eve to share this garden. Did he make her out of dust too? Oh no. The Bible tells us here in the book of Genesis that God put Adam to sleep and removed one of Adam's ribs. From that rib, God made the first woman called Eve. How did God do that? Well, God knows how to do everything, Carol. He is all-powerful and He knows everything. Were they married? Yes, they were. That was God's perfect plan for Adam and Eve. They had perfect friendship with each other and with God. God even came 
and talked with them in the garden. And he gave them the most important job on earth, to be the rulers over everything he had made. Wow! Today's memory verse is taken from Genesis chapter 2, verse 23. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of men. Genesis chapter 2, verse 23. Let's read it one more time. Genesis chapter 2, 23. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of men. Genesis chapter 2, verse 23. Have your ears ready as Miss Jane will now challenge us for a review. Hi kids! Are you ready for our lesson review? I will ask a question. You say your answer to the person next to you. Are you ready? First question. Who decided Adam needed a companion? A. The animals B. God Or C. Adam himself What's your answer? Yes, it's letter B. It was God. Next question. Why did God decide to make a companion for Adam? A. Adam was happy. B. Adam was lonely. What's the correct answer? Yes, it's letter B. Third question. From what part of Adam's body did God create Eve? A. Heart B. Hand C. Rib The answer is letter C. Next question. Did God make Adam and Eve perfect? Yes or no? The correct answer is yes. God created them perfect. Last question. Were Adam and Eve married? Yes or no? The correct answer is yes! Adam and Eve were married. Did you get a perfect score? Excellent! I'm excited to announce last week's winner for our photo contest. But first, let me thank those who participated by sending their entries. Week's winner goes to Congratulations! You all did a good job! For today's craft, we have a guest to help us to do our craft time. Let's welcome Ate Naomi! Hi kids, I'm your Ate Naomi and I'm here to welcome you back to our craft time. Today, as we learn about how God created Eve and made the first family, we will be making a photo stand which will hold a photo of you and your family. The things you need are a rock, wire, paint brushes, paint, a wire cutter or scissors if you don't have any. And if you don't have any paint, you can use some markers. And a photo of you and your family. Let's start. First, let's paint the rock. You can paint it any way you want. 
but I'm going to paint mine blue because it's my favorite color. Now I'm going to put more designs on it. You can put dots, flowers, or any shape you want. And we're done painting! As we wait for our rock to dry, we will get our wire, which was cut to about 22 inches. Next, we will curl the end of the wire around a marker. This will be the photo holder. Once the paint on the rock is dry, Wrap the wire around the rock at least two times, like this. One, two. Then, we will wrap the wire that is sticking out around the photo holder stem. If there is any remaining wire sticking out, you can cut it using a wire cutter. You can even ask help from your mommy, daddy, or even your older siblings. The last thing to do is put a picture of you and your family in the photo holder. And we are done! So this is our craft for today, kids! See you next time! Bye-bye! Our God is holy and He loves us very much. There are so many blessings God has given us and one of those are family. Thank you, Lord, for giving us all these blessings. Kids, stay healthy and stay safe. See you next week. Goodbye! Bye.